Suppose we have a subspace, and I'm going to use R2 as an example in this video. We've seen before that R2 can be written as the span of what we've previously called, although we didn't justify at the time why, the standard basis vectors, the E1 and the E2. This meant that by taking linear combinations of the E1 and the E2, that we were able to reach any vector in R2. However, the E1 and the E2 aren't the only pair of vectors that let us do this. Indeed, we can rotate and we can stretch those vectors as much as we want. For instance, let's focus on the vectors that I'm going to call A1, which is the vector 1, 1, and A2, which is the vector minus 1, 1. Notice how if I pick some random vector in R2, then I can still reach it by linear combinations of the A1 and the A2. The only way this doesn't work is if my A1 and my A2 were to line directly on top of each other. This means that R2 is also the span of A1 and A2, and many other combinations beyond just this. Algebraically, this meant that the matrix whose columns are the A1 and the A2 had a solution for any system AX equals B. Or in other words, when we put the system AX equal to B into its RREF form, then there's going to be a leading one in every single row. Incidentally, notice how the RREF of A just has the columns that are the standard basis vectors, the E1 and the E2. This reflects the fact that the span of E1 and E2 is the same thing as the span of the A1 and the A2. Now, I chose two vectors here to span R2. Clearly, zero vectors wouldn't work because you wouldn't get anywhere with them, but neither does just a single vector, as the linear combinations of only one vector is just going to be a line. But what if I use three or four or five vectors? As long as they don't all lie on the same line, the span is still going to be R2. But somehow the extra vectors don't seem necessary. This introduces us to the idea of a basis. A basis is a set of vectors that spans the subspace we are interested in, but has as few vectors as possible. It turns out that this is equivalent to asking that my set of vectors, which span all of R2, are also linearly independent. Indeed, if there ever was a dependency where one of the vectors was written as a linear combination of all the other vectors, you could just throw it out because it would not change the span. Linear combinations of this set of vectors would be the same regardless of whether or not you had this extra one that itself could be written in terms of the prior ones. By the way, it would be a good idea to pause and see if you can formally prove that claim. So, having a basis is great. You know that linear combination of the vectors span your subspace and, since they are linearly independent, you don't have any extra clutter. You don't have any extra vectors that you might need. So, having a basis is great. You know that linear combinations of your basis vectors are going to span the entire subspace, and because they are linearly independent, you don't have any extra vectors lying around to clutter things up. You need every single vector that you have in your list. 